if you're spending £35,000 on a car, you want the image to be right. Well, with the Lexus, Toyota have undoubtedly produced a quality car, but they seem rather coy about admitting that they make it. That's because they want to create a separate, superior identity for this luxury vehicle. In fact, Lexus is being sold through just 44 of Toyota's 200 or so dealers, and in each case you'll find it on the right-hand side of the showroom. Now, while Celicas and Supras may be acceptable stablemates for a prestige car, there's no denying it's also a companion to the humble Starlet. But that's not the association you're supposed to make, because Lexus is challenging the stars of the motoring firmament. Now, the cars most obviously in the firing line for Lexus are the traditional European competition, Mercedes, Jaguar and BMW. From Mercedes, the S-Class is now getting rather long in the tooth and a replacement is due. This is the 420 SE long wheelbase version, a 4.2-litre V8 engine, good performance, ride and handling, but those Mercedes extras come very expensive. The latest from Jaguar, now with a 4-litre engine, very good performance, exceptional ride and handling, and it's got traditional instruments, something the Americans demanded. And finally, from BMW, the 735i, very much a driver's car, very efficient in design and layout inside, and superbly put together. So, how do the cars compare on paper? Lexus offers the best performance of the four and a high specification at a very competitive price. About the only thing it lacks is a trip computer. The BMW nearly matches the Lexus on performance, but for that similar price offers no air conditioning, cruise control or sound system. The Jaguar also falls short of the Lexus on top speed, but matches it on specification. You get a trip computer, but no sunroof as standard, and it's not much more expensive. The Mercedes, in standard wheelbase form, has similar performance to the other European cars, but that much higher price does not include air conditioning, cruise control, a sound system or power seats, and there's no catalyst. Since stockbrokers often have a rough track leading down to their mansions, you'd expect Lexus to be able to cope with this sort of surface, and it does admirably. But once out on the motorway, the boulevard ride of a car that was after all launched in America a year ago really comes over. In the States, when Willie drove it last year, it was equipped with air suspension. In this country and in Europe, it's uh, wishbones all round, but steel coil springs. That said, it's difficult to see how they could improve on the ride and handling that we've got here in Europe. One of the most impressive aspects of Lexus is the near total silence as you waft along the road. For instance, we've got the air conditioning and the fan on and you really can't hear it. We've taken noise meter readings at steady 70 mile an hour speeds and it confirms that Lexus is considerably quieter than Mercedes, BMW or Jaguar. One reason why it's so quiet is the smoothness and silence of the big 4 litre V8 engine. But there's one aspect of that engine I've got to show you when we come to rest. Now, this is not a test we normally perform on top gear, but it's a perfect illustration of the Lexus engine. I can put a glass of water on top of the unit, and at idle, there isn't even a disturbance in the surface. Better still, I can have the engine revved to 6,000 RPM. You can see the water doesn't even tremble. Now that's not something you can do with the other three rivals. Toyota tell us they had a team of 60 engineers working on noise, vibration and harshness. And the results speak for themselves. For those who like electronic toys in their cars, the Lexus will be a source of endless amusement. The seat position memory for two different people not only controls the position of the seat itself, but also of the steering wheel and the shoulder mounting of the seat belt and the position of the headrest. 
Inside Lexus, the first thing that strikes you is the instrument panel. They've actually illuminated the dials from behind, so it has an almost 3D effect that's almost magical. The attention to detail in the leatherwork is very good, and the wood is excellent. They've actually gone to Yamaha, the Japanese piano and violin manufacturers, for their veneers, and it was worth it. By comparison, the Mercedes is much more Teutonic, traditional approach. If you want the epitome of traditional luxury in a car, though, you really can't beat the Jaguar with its lovely leatherwork and its walnut finishings. The BMW has a, an instrument layout that hasn't been bettered by almost any other manufacturer, and that really is a driver's car for the man who's going to press on down the autobahn. In comparison with those three, you could argue, though, that the Lexus looks almost bland. We used to say that the Japanese industry would look after the mass market of cars, but the Europeans would dominate in the niche markets. That's not true anymore. The Japanese make excellent sports cars, and this, their first entry in the luxury market, is petrifyingly good. In terms of ride, handling, comfort and silence, it equals or beats the European opposition. And when you look at the level of equipment, it's amazing value for money. What it hasn't got is the heritage, the charisma, the image of the European manufacturers with their history of competition success. Now, if Toyota can convince rich businessmen that they don't need that heritage, they've got a real winner.